Let's talk about mistakes to avoid in 2024 because I think a lot of people, they need to hear this conversation because how many of us would agree 2023 was a little bit of a weird year, right? The weird economy, inflation, the interest rates were high. I think a lot of people for the first time in years, they made less money last year than they made the year before. A lot of friends in business, in network marketing, in sales, they're working harder and making less than they were last year. If you're selling coaching services or courses, like it's, it's a little bit harder to get attention. Now, some of you might still be crushing it. Kudos to you. I'm still crushing it too, just so you know, in case you were wondering, <laughs> right? But I've also been doing this for two decades. So for those of us who maybe been in business for five years, seven years, nine years, like this is uncharted territory. But I can tell you, I remember the last time the market crashed in 2008. And here's the truth. That was my first six figure year in network marketing. That was the year that I fired my boss and I went all in. A lot of what we do in life is based on mood, based on energy. If you don't have a passion every day for what you're doing, it's going to be hard to attract other people. So one mistake that you need to avoid is doing things that zap your energy, doing things that don't necessarily propel you in the direction of your future goals, the ambitions you have. A great example is little choices you make every day to eat the apple or the candy bar, to ATM your face off or just get caught in the scroll hole on social media, watching Netflix or creating your own videos. There's people out there that have a bigger passion for their football team, a bigger passion for the team they follow than they have for their own life. And that's so sad to me. So number one is you need to have energy in the new year. How many, of you, how many of you would agree I have a little bit of energy? How many of you think like, damn, John talks fast. I've always been like this. But you know, it's funny. I remember when I first started doing presentations and people would tell me to slow it down because they couldn't keep up with how fast I spoke. And I noticed, especially once I started doing video presentations or just videos like this, when I would try to slow it down and be more chill, I just noticed that wasn't me. So if you say to yourself, he talks too fast, you're not my person. It's all good. Well, that or you just have to listen fast. You know what I'm saying? But the point is you have to be you times two on social media. If you want to get attention, don't be boring in the new year. That's tip number two. Don't be boring right? You have to show up with energy. The people that are crushing it in my business, top performers, people that consistently bring in customers, consistently recruit, they're excited about what they're doing. Some people say, John, I am excited. Tell your face. How about this mistake? Being inauthentic, being fake. I don't like fake it till you make it. I like faith it till you make it. People can smell a fraud a mile away. People don't want to follow people that don't love what they're doing, that are inauthentic, that are inconsistent. They're just not going to see your stuff. If you want to stand out, how about this mistake? Not doing live videos, not putting your face on camera. Some people say, John, I got a face for radio. Get over it. There are ugly people making a fortune on social media. <laughs> Listen, sometimes it's not about how you look, it's just about better lighting. You know what I'm saying? You just need better lighting. Maybe you need a better haircut. I don't know, but you need to put your face on camera. People need to see you. They need to get to know you, trust you. You might say, well, I don't get as many viewers. That's okay. Pay attention to the people that are paying attention to you. So not going live is a big mistake. Not working on your personal development every day. How many of you are reading a book every single day? Do you have to do personal development every day? No, not necessarily. You don't necessarily have to bathe every day either, but you choose to, don't you? You don't have to brush your teeth. You know the saying, right? Only brush the teeth you want to keep. A big mistake that people make is they don't grow themselves every single day. They don't listen to personal development every single day, even if it's 15 minutes of a podcast, 15 minutes of video like this. Just listen to it for 15 minutes. That'll give you inspiration, motivation, excitement. Stop listening to the crap that doesn't help you develop into the leader you need to build to be, to build the business you want to be. Does that make sense? If I, I think I missed said that, but you get my point. If you want to build an empire, you want to build a dream team, you wouldn't be able to lead a team of leaders if you didn't become a leader yourself. Be the leader you wish you had in your upline. Be the leader you want to attract. Some people say, John, where do you find all these good people? I had to become a good person to attract good people. I had to become a leader to attract leaders. Here's another mistake, not connecting with people one-on-one. -on -one. People are looking for community, connection, one-on-one. -on -one. I've been doing one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and they have been amazing. 
coaching some of my leaders. And it's amazing how people just need to hear a couple things, just a little validation. When they're trying to build something really big, to hear from someone that have already built it, that are already achieving massive results, it paints their vision. It gives them some, some vision for what they're capable of because they're talking to someone that has bigger vision, that's been around, that's created massive results. Does that make sense? So I'm just saying getting on the phone, having those one-on-one conversations with you know people on your team, potential business prospects. I'm telling you, even if it's just a 10 minute call, if the call goes well, it could be longer. If not, hey, I got another call in 15 minutes. Like just getting on the phone, one-on-one connection is such a big deal. Also, how about not using the audio recorder? How many of you use audio in Messenger? Such a big deal to continue to nurture those relationships so they can hear your voice, your tonality, your excitement. How about not committing to events? When's the last event you went to? Oh, six months ago, a year ago, two years ago? No wonder you're discouraged. You gotta go be with the people. People will say, I can't afford the flight. All the more reason to go. Can't afford to miss it. You can't afford not to go. It'll cost you more money not to go. Imagine if one event saved you five years of struggle. Imagine if one event, just one training, one conversation saved you five years of struggling. Would it be worth it? The people that can't afford to go, can't afford not to go. So that's a big mistake. Not being consistent, I don't feel like it. It's the law of inertia. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. So when you say like, I don't feel like doing this, I don't feel like doing that, you got it twisted. I'll wait until I'm motivated. No, no, no. You do the thing and the motivation kicks in. It's like working out. How many of you ever go, I don't feel like working out, but you go work out for like, I'll I'll go work out for like five minutes, 15 minutes. I'll just go, I'll do some push-ups. All of a sudden, an hour and a half goes by and you're like, damn. Like you found the motivation because you took action. You got into motion. How about not leading by example? This is another really big pain point for people is they're expecting their team to do the things they used to do. No, 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 that's not how it works. You can't say, team, you should do videos. I'm not doing videos. Guys, you should be recruiting. I'm not recruiting. You guys should do short form videos. Go get some customers. You guys should do this and you should do that. You should go to the event. It's like, you're not even registered for the event. Well, I was waiting to see if my team registered. No, you don't rely on other people. You do the thing you want them to do. And if they step up, great. If they don't, great. You're going to find new people. I'm always launching new teams. I'm always selling. I'm always on every leaderboard. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like me. In fact, I know some people watch this and they'll probably get turned off because they'll go, oh, I don't want to be like him. Look, I'm not saying you got to be like me, but you just can't expect your business to grow when you're not growing. You can't expect your team to recruit when you're not recruiting. You can't expect your team to do the things you're not doing. Be the leader you wish you had. Be the leader you want to attract. You got to step it up in your leadership. Your personal development, you need to work on this right here. Your stinking thinking, your limiting beliefs, relying too much on attraction marketing, That's another big mistake. Just sitting back, twiddling your thumbs. Hopefully someone will ask you about my products. You mean the products you never talk about on your social media? You mean the business you never talk about on your social media? I'm confused. I don't see any videos. I don't see any posts. I don't see anything in your stories. If you're not talking about the products in your story, you're not doing any videos or reels, how are people gonna know you have a product or opportunity? Or you're the opposite. You're just a damn infomercial and it's just selling, selling, selling. There's no value. There's no story. There's nothing outside of product, product, product. Pitch, 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 sell, sell, sell. Just stop it. It's a turnoff. I'm telling you, you got to have a healthy balance of value. In fact, write down the three E's. If you never heard them, that's shocking. But write them down. You want to create content that entertains, empowers, or educates. Education is number one for me. I like to like enter train. You know what I'm saying? I like to have some fun. I'm kind of like training and entertaining simultaneously, especially on stage, especially when I'm with Nadia. That's when I have the most fun. Education is the number one highest form of sales. Think of the books you've bought, the products you've purchased, the people you've enrolled with, worked with. They probably led with some form of education in most cases. They're teaching you something. And when you teach people something of value, they don't care where you got it from. They don't care if it was from a personal experience or from a book you read or a podcast you listened to. If you're teaching them something, they're going to start to look at you as an authority. They're going to start to look at you as someone that brings value to the marketplace. And if you do that consistently over time, it might take you six months to have a breakthrough. It might take you six months to start generating leads and followers and really start to attract people. But when you get those three E's figured out and then you get this this fourth piece, relatability. You gotta be relatable. People can't relate to product ingredients or numbers on a compensation 
plan, people relate to people. So when you're telling your story, your experience, using your personality, your, your experiences, that will attract more people. But don't rely so much on attraction marketing. You need to create some curiosity about your products and opportunity. You need to tell some stories. You need to interview some people. You need to show some, some testimonials before and after pictures. Like you need to mix it up. And you gotta be very proactive in, in building those relationships and popping the question, seeing if people are open to other income streams, if they're open to learning more. By the way, another mistake I see in 2024, people trying to automate the mentorship, automate the onboarding. They're trying to automate all the things. I sent out a message to you know, 200 people through Project Broadcast. Okay, why can't you personalize that conversation? People sending out mass messages and, you know, watch, I, I recruit a new person, watch these videos, good luck. No, you follow up and you say, hey, listen, are you ready to start posting? Are you ready to do your first post? Did you have any questions? Are you ready to start reaching out to people? What are you prepared to do? Because our goal is to get you your first five customers and your first recruit. Who can we talk to? Do you want to start posting, prospecting? What are you ready to do? I can help you, I can offer some suggestions, but you tell me, what are you ready to do? How do you wanna get this ball rolling? Stop trying to automate all the things. Automation is really sexy, it sounds really good. You see these people like, I only work one hour a day. Like, how is that a great mentor? <laughs> how is that a great leader? So you work your business literally five hours a week? You're trying to build a dream team, try to be a millionaire five hours a week? Something ain't adding up. How about this, not sacrificing. You know the hardest thing in the world is to sacrifice what you want now for what you want later. Does that make sense? You want a six pack, you gotta make some sacrifices. You want a packed bank account? You wanna earn six figures in 2024? You wanna crack six figures a month? You gonna have to make some sacrifices, right? Sacrifice is necessary for a breakthrough, y'all. What are you willing to sacrifice? How bad do you want it? How are you developing your brand? developing your skills, developing your confidence. What are you doing? Listen, you can make money or make excuses. You can't do both. I don't want you to continue making these mistakes. I don't want you to look back five years from now, 10 years from now with regret because you didn't go all in. 